Hello, my name is Harold Hafton, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, I figured it would be good to put those new 1.20 editions to good use. While we build a calendar garden, I was inspired to recreate in Minecraft after a recent trip, and we'll also be talking about the history and purpose of medieval gardens. Before I get into the specifics of the calendar garden that I'm building here in Minecraft, I want to talk first about the history of gardens as they relate to medieval culture. The etymology of the word garden comes to the English through French and is derived from the same verb that means to guard or to protect. That makes sense to me. A garden is often an enclosed space either by a fence, a wall, or some other definable barrier. It is separate from the wilderness, from the hustle and bustle of city streets, and as everyone who has ever kept a garden knows, it's something you have to spend time and effort guarding against the constant intrusion of weeds or unwanted bugs or pests. The enclosed walls or fence of the garden also had a practical purpose in protecting the space from unwanted people entering that space or stealing the bounty of the produce. Now, I'm sure much like the fence in my yard, Back in past times, it didn't always stop a neighbor or passing by from reaching over the fence to pick things within reach. But even if not 100% effective, having a fence or other physical boundary line creates a reminder of where authorized access should lie. In the Middle Ages, gardens were often thought of with a religious overtone, which is like a lot of the other things generally speaking, in the Middle Ages. This thinking draws a connection back to the original Garden of Eden in the Christian tradition. To the people of the Middle Ages, that garden was the original garden. It was important because it was a place that God created for humans. Thus, recreating a garden could be thought of as a way to recreate or reconstruct that original connection. It's almost like in their minds, building a garden was like constructing a spiritual conduit that allowed a closer connection to God, just like how Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden had that closer connection. Moving away from the religious or metaphysical for a moment, when someone's visiting a garden, often it prompts an emotional state that would back up that spiritual result if a person is coming at that space with that predilection in mind. It's frankly hard to be stressed out in a garden. A well-designed and maintained garden is often relaxing. Maybe that's because people like looking at pretty things. Maybe it's because of the increased oxygen of all the plants. Gardens tend to promote contemplation, and it isn't hard to draw a line between that state of contemplation and, say, a monk walking through their garden and using that space to pray. Speaking of monks and the monasteries and priories where they lived, one of the articles I came across while doing my research for this video describe the gardens at Mount Grace Priory. Located in Staddlebridge in North Lincolnshire, England, the gardens in that priory were located within each cell the monks would live. Now, I just said the monk's cell, so I want to clarify that. By cell, I don't mean a prison cell, although perhaps monks sometimes thought of them that way, but rather that was the name of the living quarters the monks were assigned. At the Mount Grace Priory, each cell had a bedroom, a study, a small living room, an outhouse, and a small cloister. In other words, a small covered walkway that contained at the end of it a small place for them to, to pray or, or take services. That took up about a third to half of the room within each cell. The other space was dedicated to different gardens. There was a long garden bed, a sizable herb garden, and a flowery garden plot. The priory was surrounded by a wall, and each cell was, in turn, surrounded from each other by a wall, and each garden within the cell was separated by a small fence or other form of boundary. The Mount Grace Priory is part of a monastic order called the Carthusians. While this happened later in the 17th and 18th century, so later than the Middle Ages, the Carthusian order of monks are responsible for the creation and the invention of chartreuse liquor and also 4711 cologne, which, as I understand it, is one of the world's oldest commercially produced fragrances. And they use their gardens to create those original recipes. The other connection with gardens into their medieval Garden of Eden view is that Eden contained plants of every different type, and so often medieval gardens were a place where a great variety of different plants were collected. As monks would travel and visit different monasteries, they would bring seeds and share different varieties with one another, thus creating a fuller and more complex garden in their own monasteries. Wait, hold up a second here. Did you see that? Let me rewind and do that in slow motion. Sneaky creeper. 
It's amazing I managed to not lose everything. Look at all that stuff everywhere. Thankfully, I recovered everything, but my organization went right out the window. So, where was I? Oh, yeah. This trend continued through the Middle Ages, and as the medieval sphere of knowledge expanded into the Middle East during the Crusade, knowledge and samples of those types of plants were incorporated into their gardens as well. Even after the Middle Ages, through the Age of Exploration and into the Enlightenment, as Europeans explored North and South America, Africa, and beyond, the new plant types were collected and incorporated into their gardens. We see this even today in modern botanical gardens that often have plant collections from all over the world, and that action has its roots in the medieval desire to try and replicate and reconstruct the Garden of Eden. Beyond the religious rationale for a garden, in the Middle Ages, gardens had a practical purpose. They were a place where vegetables were grown, where fruit trees were cultivated, and where herbs were developed. Some herbs were grown for the medicinal values, where others were grown to flavor food. Spices were quite expensive in the Middle Ages, and the only sweetener medieval people had was honey. Sugar as we know it today was not something that was known or available. At the Mount Grace Priory, some of the plants and herbs that were grown there were cloves, lavender, lemon balm, meadow sweet, winter savory, and thyme. Fennel was also grown, which the monks would chew to relieve hunger during fasts. Maybe someone today should make some fennel-flavored gum. I'm sure that's a popular idea that would catch on. Beyond just plants grown for flavoring food, another important component of a medieval or monastic garden was to grow strewing herbs. These plants contained things like majorum, sweet wood rough, roses, or hyssop, would then be scattered on the floors of buildings or hung in bunches from the ceiling to help mask bad smells. Medieval gardens could also contain fruit trees similar to what we would now consider an orchard as opposed to a garden. So think of things like apple trees, quince trees, or pear trees. Illuminated medieval manuscripts also show that while probably not used in a monk's herb garden, in the gardens of medieval nobles, it seems to have been common for the garden to contain turf seats. This was a block of soil covered with grass or turf, which allowed the nobles to sit, have picnics, or socialize without having to sit directly on the ground. Okay, enough of the history lesson. Now that the garden is finished, let me give you a tour and tell you a bit about what I built. I was recently on a trip to northern Indiana in the Midwest of the United States and visited this garden called the DeFries Garden in New Paris, which is in Elkhart County, Indiana. This calendar garden is meant to represent the four seasons of the calendar, which contains a themed building in each of the cardinal directions that corresponds to the season of the garden that building is located in. There is a 365 foot circular path that goes around the garden and represents each day of the calendar. And so you can see that as you walk around the circular path, there are signs that corresponds to the months of the year. The plants that are planted in that part of the year correspond to the season or month that those t plants typically would bloom. I thought it was a pretty cool concept because it means you could return to the garden over the course of the year time and time again, even in winter, and see different things and different plants in their various stages of their life cycle. In the center of the garden is a pool, which you can see I replicated here. In Minecraft, I couldn't replicate the variety and density of the real garden, but but I tried to use each and every type of plant and flower that I could think of in this Minecraft garden build, even using some of the coral plants to approximate some of the decorative white plants in the real calendar garden. I tried to decorate the garden here in the same theme of the real DeFries garden. So for example, I placed the various plants that correspond to the seasons when those plants and flowers would bloom in real life. The evergreen plants and the spruce trees I planted over in the winter months. The tulips and a lot of the other flowering plants I placed in the spring and early summer months. I also took inspiration from the buildings that exist there in real life and placed those where they would correspond in my Minecraft build compared to where they would be in the real DeFries garden. The last thing I tried to do is not simply use the default pre-generated trees in all cases. I use them in some cases you can see, but sprinkled around, I also put some custom trees, some small trees and some hedges, some bushes. I think it all came together pretty well, and I hope you think so too. 
Well, that wraps up this video. I hope that you like my recreation of the DeFries Calendar Garden and our talk about medieval gardens more generally. I put a number of links to various articles and online resources I used when researching and creating this video. If you ever happen to be visiting Elkhart County in northern Indiana, I recommend you stop by and check out the garden in real life. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye for now.